How are you, mate? How are you? Not so bad, mate. How about yourself? Yeah, good, good. I'm here. How's that? How's that? What, yeah, what is that? That's, all, that's all good, mate. Beautiful. Yeah. How's things? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, mate. I appreciate you um, jumping on and having a chat with me, mate. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a real big honour to be able to talk to you, mate. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, You've mate. Had all right. on, eh? Sorry, mate. You've had a few of the boys on? Yeah, mate. Yep, yep. I've had um, yeah, a fair few of um. Got a couple lined up, got Kerry Walters um, lined up as well. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, just to try to get the um, people in Perth following rugby league. That's the whole point of the page. Um, you know, okay. and, yeah, possibly with the 18th team coming up, you know, sort yeah. of make the NRL notice that Perth, I think, deserves a team. So, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Um, Sorry, <clears throat> move this light around in that for you. Was... No, you're right, buddy. Um, yeah, so Steve. Thank you for joining me on my um on my chat and our all fans WA. No worries. Um, thanks for on, Jane. Sorry, mate. I said thanks for having me on. No, that's all good, mate. I, like I said, mate, you're um you've you've been a hero of mine since I was a little kid, mate. I remember meeting you when I was a little kid. I was probably about seven years old. Really? Um, met you, yeah, met you down at South Bank. Um, you had a chat with my um my old man. Um, and my, yeah. and I had a, I had a picture with you and everything, but yeah. Oh wow! Um, yeah, funny. so, but you were the reason. Uh, to be quite honest, you were the reason um, I started following the Broncos. So, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and it's just a huge honour to have a chat with you, mate. So, really, like I said, I really do appreciate your time. That's all right. That's all right. Um, we we'll jump into your career, mate. Um, you're a very loyal uh, bloke, mate. You only play for the two clubs. Um, from '88 to '99, you play for the Brisbane Broncos. Um, and then 2000 or 2001, you go over to England and um, play for the Wigan Warriors. Um, you know, you also get to represent Queensland and Australia. Um, you know, and also the Super League as well. You, in the Super League, um, big debacle, you uh, stayed with the Broncos, stayed loyal to the Broncos as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you when you look back at your career, mate, is there um, anything that you sort of take away from your sporting career that's made you into the man that you are today? Yeah, look, I, I think um, we were just very fortunate. Um, I always say that, uh, you know, I know it takes a lot of hard work. Sorry, mate, I've got a crow in the background, but um, I'm out in my deck. But, uh, yeah, look, we were very fortunate. You know, going there as a 17-year-old, um, I, I, I probably, you know, you owe the Brisbane Broncos a lot, uh, especially Wayne Bennett, that he uh, he put a lot of faith in me as a, as a young fella. And, um, you know, to go there as a 17-year-old, I, I got... I, Started my electrical apprenticeship there and finished it. Uh, and I was still fourth year apprentice when I won my first grand final, so 92. So, you know, it was a very special start to my footy career and also my career outside of footy. Yeah, awesome. Uh, that's beautiful, mate. Um, you know, I was talking to Chris Walker a few uh, weeks ago and, yeah, he had nothing but high praise for Wayne Bennett as well, mate. Um, he seems that, like everyone knows how good of a coach he is and, <clears throat> excuse me, a people manager. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, talking to Chris and um, that it's, he's just a genuine bloke and it's, um, you know, helps a lot of the guys out. Um, you yeah. Know, -wise. Uh, you know, you, you can still have a chat to him after footy as well. And, um, you know, I'm going to catch up with him um, in a couple of days and just, just have a quick chat and chew the fat. And, um, he, you know, and he's a busy man at the moment. He, he's, he's going to be starting a new team at the moment. So, you know, he's still got to try and fit in all these old, old other little disciples like us and find, to find time for us. So he's a good man. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, when, you, when you were a kid coming up, mate, um, out in the country in Queensland, was there anyone that you sort of looked up to, um, you know, idolised, um, maybe not a sporting hero, but, um, yeah, is there anyone that you sort of looked up to? No, for me, honestly, for me, um, uh, Growing up and, um, you know, I, I always say my, my two older brothers, they, they play rugby league. Um, so we, we had a pretty strong family. Um, I've I got eight sisters and there's, there's four boys. Um, so I grew up in a rugby league community, Mergen, out at Mergen. And, um, you know, Brian Niebling come from there and, um, you know, Dustin Cooper and, um, and Gavin Cooper and all, the, you know, they, they're, they're all Mergen boys. But uh, for me, because uh, we only got 
the ABC back then, it was the, the big league. Uh, Mal Menenga become my favourite player and and then obviously after that become idol because we used to get the the uh, replay of the Sunday game and obviously for South and a lot of that uh, during the 80s, South Magpies here in Brizzy. Yeah. And so Mal Meninga become my idol and, and lo and behold, and, and you couldn't, for me to have an idol such as him is probably one of the perfect ones. So I got to play Origin and play for Australia with your idol you know not many people get to do that in their lifetime so for me it's very special and, and what made even better he, he's a really good bloke yeah that's that's the way mate that's perfect yeah he's he would be an absolute he's an idol for a lot of people growing up i mean yeah. um you know like yourself for me um mal Meninga was the other bloke um he just sent his authority on the game he was a great rugby yeah. league player but you could also see him um that he had time for the people as well yeah, definitely. And, you know, that was good. I mean, I, my, my debut against Mel uh, was here in Brizzy uh, at Lane Park. And I, we won that match, you know, and I think I got a couple of many pies. But to mark him for the first time, but then to catch up with him afterwards and have a beer, it was it was just like, you know, he was your mate. So I was, I was really happy with that. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. Um, when, you, when you were playing for the Broncos, mate, you, um, you know, you, like you had a hell of a long career there. You had you know, 88 to 99, 183 games, um, including the Super League years. Um, you know, you win, what, four or five grand finals there? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you're the all-time try scoring um, record there. You've got the most amount of four-point tries in, in, the, in the club's history and the most amount of tries in the season uh, with Darren Smith. Um, you know, do you look back on your career at the Broncos? Um, you know, obviously you played with Wigan as well, but you know, you're more known for the Broncos. Yeah. You know, you look back at those those years at the Broncos and just think, you know, um, reflect and go, wow, I had I did have an amazing career there. Yeah, mate, I do, and you know, you you've got to pinch yourself and um, the way things evolved, as I as I mentioned before about being a young guy there and involved, and and you're looking at all these players ahead of you. You know, we, but it was nearly like it was. Uh, it was it was a way it was supposed to be, you know, for us to come through 17-year-olds and Wally Lewis is there and Greg Dowling and Gene Miles and Greg Kineski and all these legends. And and then we had to come along and somehow fit in. But uh, it, it seemed to work. And I, what, what I must say is uh, Wayne, Wayne Bennett did obviously did a great job at pulling a club together as, as a team. And he taught us a lot about, um, you know, as being a team and the good thing for the club we you know we we learned very early we'd rather win than lose and and that, I think that's very important it sounds pretty basic but um you know we had the scenario you know would you would you rather be at a club that you're losing every week or you'd rather be at a club where you're winning most of your games and and if you if you've been at clubs like that you there's a massive difference in the feeling around the joint so and as I said, we were just very, very lucky. And yeah, look, to this day, I still pinch myself and go, well, I don't know how it happened, but uh, somehow, um, you know, I end up in, in this mighty Brisbane Bronco uh, club and uh, they still are and they'll, they'll bounce back again. And uh, for me to be a, a part of that original uh, Broncos is, is something I hold really close to my heart. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. You know, you, you, know, you play, like I said, you play in um, was a four grand finals for them. Um, you know, that includes the Super League one. Um, yeah, the 92 grand final, obviously, yeah, you're most remembered for that, you know, long range try, the 98 metre try, whatever it was. Um, when you when you sort of see that, that replay or anything like that, do you have any um, thoughts that come to, you, uh, to your head? Like, um, you know, going through that, um, that run that you had? Yeah, I always love it now, so I'll guarantee I'll see it around grand final time. <laughs> but, uh, it, uh, but you know, it, it does bring back memories. It, it brings back memories how, how much of a team we were. When, when you see the makeup, I, and I'll, I'll preface this by saying that, that it's, it wasn't a move, but that play with Willie Khan coming out of uh, uh, the in gold and it's such a great effort for him to do that. But that was yeah. Willie Khan, and he did that week in, week out. And, and when he did that, uh, our instructions from Wayne Bennett, the outside backs, 
Um, so down my side that time was Michael Hancock and myself was, it was virtually, he said to us, when you see those kicks go through, you, you outside back, get your, get your asses back there just in case Elf and Kevy see something. Yeah. And, and that's, it was very ad lib, even though we knew there possibly could be something on. And, and the way that, that try evolved um, so that, and we didn't always get a try to, but we were doing that the whole year. Yeah, you know, in different games, that that was just our style of footy. But on that day, I happened to get the try. So, but it was very much a, a team try. Yeah, definitely, definitely, mate. I mean, I've got um the DVDs of that of um all the grand finals of the Broncos, mate. So, you know, I've I've watched it several times. So yeah, um yeah, really can't get out of that um in goal. Um, you know, just set that up perfectly for you. You know, yeah, I don't um, know if you, you remember the the one of the things uh, they. Kevy Walters actually pushes Carrot, his brother, out of dummy half to yeah. get the ball to Elf, to get the ball to me. And it, it was just, it's typical what, what happens. Yeah, that's very ad lib. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's that's what the Broncos were about, though. They were, um, yeah. you know, you guys were like, um, obviously you had a certain structure that you'd play, but you'd also play, you were able to play the ad lib footy. And that made you so dangerous. Yeah, and, and that, that's what Wayne Bennett really trusted us with. And we, we appreciated that. And, I think he realised and um, that you know, yes, I'll give these boys a game plan, but he knew any time we could just sort of go, go off, go off on the tangent as long yeah. as we knew to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, ninety-one to ninety-eight, mate. You're um, able to play or represent for Queensland as well. Uh, play thirteen games. Um, how, how highly, obviously, you're Australia as well. You've played 92 to 98. you played 11 games for Aussie. Um, but obviously, like, for a lot of NRL fans, State of Origin's the pinnacle. Um, yeah. You know, representing your country is too, but there's not nothing like State of Origin. How, how was that um, when you made your debut for Queensland? Oh, it was amazing, mate. You, you can imagine, I'm 21. Um, so 21 run, or actually, at the time, you know, I was 21. Um, running out on Lane Park, be led out by Wally Lewis, led out by the King in our first state of origin. That so, you know, it gives me goosebumps every time I say that. It's, uh, so to to do, to have that happen in your life, uh, and Mel Meninga also run out there, you know, with my idol, and um, so for me it was just amazing. And uh, we got away with that win. I think it was a, a, a tight win, um, yep. and we end up winning that series, but. Uh, so we very, very lucky. But as I say, um, the run out to the old Lane Park and they used to all talk about it, and, you know, when we were younger and how the crowd, you know, just gets gets to you and hits you in the chest. And I'll tell you what, they didn't let us down. It was a, it was amazing. <laughs> I bet it was, mate. Um, do you remember much of your uh, Aussie debut as well? Um, you know, yeah, obviously well, it was, so that, uh, was a big was thing a, too. Oh, mate, it was amazing, you know, it's for, you know, to go over to the first world, my first world cup and they had a different content back then. So it was around, uh, you know, it was played over a couple of years and who are the top two teams and obviously Great Britain uh, and Australia. And, mate, I got to play and I, I wasn't guaranteed I was spot. I mean, we were over for three weeks, had a couple of trials. Um, and to be honest, I went over there and got in a bit of party mode because I thought, well, Oh, you know, in a way, I thought, oh, Buckley's are making this because uh, it was my first tour. Yeah. And next minute, I get picked, and I was like, wow. <laughs> so, so I had a week to recover and, and, and get off the drink. And um, it was, uh, but it was just amazing to to run out onto Wembley, the old Wembley Stadium. Yeah. Uh, 70, I think 71,000 people um, is just something that I'll never. You, you know, I'll never get to witness again. So, so for me, that was just amazing. And then, lo and behold, we we were under the pump. To be honest, there, there were no try scored at times. Little uh, penalty kicks. I think we were behind. Um, we were a threat of losing. And as a debutant, especially a debutant, you don't, as an Australian player, you don't want to get beaten. <laughs> so, you don't, especially a World Cup final. So it's like. So we we're under the pump of it, but then uh, Kevy Walters came on and changed everything. And um, lo and behold, he, he come across the ruck and forced me into the into the out ball, and the rest is history. Uh, so yeah. you know, and, and that was very special. I must that that was special, and 
the good thing about that is that Kevy, we had about six in the squad, six Bronco players, but the rest of our team were there because they flew over for the World Club Challenge two weeks later. So they were in the crowd to watch us. And um, so that was special as well to have all the Brisbane Broncos and, and our wives there to watch. Well, that's awesome. That that would have been, yeah, it would have been an absolute thrill to have that, um, your, your teammates in yeah. the crowd watching you. Yeah. Um, yeah, with with your career, you um, you know, you've you've come out. I've uh, said many times, you know, you went through your career as um a type one diabetic. Um, yeah. how, how did you deal with with that um, being you know um, diabetic and stuff like that and playing uh, professional sport? Mate, I, I was very very. Yeah, your microphone's cut off there, mate. That's that work. Yeah, this year I'm 28 years, I think, of uh, type one diabetic. Yep. Um, and being diagnosed back again, I always say I was very, very lucky. Very lucky through the fact that I was a, I was with the Brisbane Broncos, and unlike a, a lot of other people regionally or wherever, I, I had access to the best doctors um, who gave me great. And obviously, it then comes back to you as an individual how you look after that. But to get that advice yep. early. Um, I was given that advice uh, by still my GP today, Dr. Peter Friss. He just said to me, he said, look, you, you can keep playing footy with this, it's, but it's solely up to you. He said, you go away and look after it, do what your specialists tell you, uh, and you can keep playing rugby league and, and play a full, full career. Or you don't look after it, um, and you don't. He said it was basically that. He said, you don't look after it, the ending's not good. Um, and that's not even, he wasn't just talking about um, your, my footy career. So yeah. he gave me no option, but I did have very good doctors and specialists around me. So I thank them for that and very much thank um, my, probably uh, the teammates. The teammates are really good and supportive around when I was uh, got diagnosed. And so they kept an eye on me um, which, and yep. kept me in fact. Oh, that's the way. Um, yeah, with, with your um, diabetes, did you have to sort of, um, check your diet and stuff like that, change all that sort of stuff, the way you trained, um, anything like that? Yeah, mate. Well, well, when you think about it, um, my lifestyle sort of suited diabetes. You know, I was active. Um, we were training, you know, three or four days a week. Um, it was just about monitoring uh, my blood glucose levels and making sure they are intact. And, and you learn very quickly how, how to balance that out as a, as a type 1 diabetic. Um, so for me, and look, treatment, compared to then is very different today. Back then, I started out four to six uh, injections a day, uh, constant finger prick testing, you know, probably six or eight times a day. And you've got to do that at the start. you really got to put the hard work in to really uh, get the hold of, of the condition. Yeah. And now, uh, since then, technology, you know, I, uh, I wear a Medtronic pump, insulin pump. So that sits um, on me and, and just little cannula sits I have it on my butt and it just sits under your skin and you're able to automatically put your insulin in and it acts like a, a mini um, or pancreas or, or your, okay. your, cell produce, uh, your insulin producing cells and, and it keeps you balanced. Uh, but you still, it's still about monitoring and doing the right thing. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, that's great that you know, technology has helped um, people like yourself that are uh, suffering from that, you know, type one diabetes, it's come a long way. Yeah, I've got five. Five of my children have it as well, so they've they've all uh, uh, acquired that over different times of their, you know, childhood and young adulthood. But uh, they're all on insulin pumps, and they're doing very well as well. No, that's uh, it's good to hear, mate. It's good to hear. Um, when when you were playing um, with the Broncos, mate, um, you know, we talked about before about the Super League days. Um, do you remember? Yeah, the conversations and stuff that were going around, or you know, how were you close to signing with anyone else, staying with the ARL? Well, mate, the first we heard about this, it had to be '94, I think. I think '94, maybe started '95 when it all went down. We were sitting around a table at Illawarra for dinner the night before a game, and John Rebo put the proposition up to us, you know, about you know opening up the coffers and you know what if we said you could play in a comp and you're on three times of what, what you're on now and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, you got us all excited. And um, 
then lo and behold, Super League comes down to 95. So we sort of got the heads up. And um, But funny times, mate, I must admit, funny times, just through the fact that the comp was split, um, you know, and um, there was reasons why it was done, but there was a lot of friendships lost as well. Okay. Um, and not just with players, you know, some players, not many, but administrators, um, you know, um, you know that, that they no longer are friends because of Super League. And that was a sad part about it. Um, yeah. uh, but there, it was done for a reason. Um, and I think we sort of showed that. When I say open up the coffer, I, I, I think at the time, and, and look, and ARL were, were very good to me. Obviously, you know, I got selected, or, you know, played in their comp, but I you know, got selected many times for Australia and I really appreciated that. But um, I think from a money point of view, the... the um, uh, it wasn't really being filtered down to the players um, compared to what they were making. Yep. And, and that's how footy is now. It, the players, in a way, um, can thank that Super League era for the salaries they are on today, to be honest. Yep, yep. I was just about to say that, um, you know, a similar thing. But I think that it, talking to a few other guys that were around at that time, like Mark Guy and stuff as well, um, it sort of made it's gone from a it went from a sort of semi professional sport uh, to a you know complete full time professional you know job. Yeah, and exactly, and and it was nearly you know it was like well you know it was like the it's a real unionist side of you well know, you know you guys aren't being paid what you should be paid yeah. for, for what you are committing to every week, um, you know, and and you know, I've heard Wayne Bennett go he goes you know these boys risk their lives every week yeah. out in that field. Um, so virtually, and you, you're getting belted around, so they should be remunerated. Yep, absolutely, man. Yep. Um, I know you do a lot with um, Deadly Choices these days, the Aboriginal um, communities yep. and stuff like that, mate. What do you, um, what do you think, um, especially places like Perth, um, you know, Adelaide, Melbourne, all these sort of places, what do you think they need to, I guess, do to get our young Indigenous um, kids involved in maybe not just rugby league, but in sport in general. Yeah, look, mate, and and it's it's funny you say that. We got a you know, there's just just to get our, our community active, um, but there's so many different avenues of sport and and, and sport for us. And it, I mean, I, I for for everyone, but um, for for the young kids, it's an avenue out of different situations. It, it's an opportunity. Um, it's about feeling good about yourself, uh, getting in a team. Um, if you opt to go on a team, it's great. I'm obviously I'm a team sportsman, but there's individual uh, sports out there as well. But it's about having a look at that, and um, and avenues can get open up for these for these young kids. Um, but the, I think the best thing is around their health and well being, about them feeling better about themselves, and around their self confidence. And I think that's a, a big thing. And and one thing we obviously looking at too in 2032, we've got the the Olympics coming to Brisbane. Yeah. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of work around that. Um, you know, our, our Premier announced a big program today here in Brizzy around, the, over. you know, they'll start a program to uh, scout for future Olympians for 2032. And I think, and that'll that'll go right across the state. So well, that you, you can't get anything better than that, but it, it's, and, but I think the bottom line is about these young kids getting self-confidence out of it and it, it, it all augurs well uh, for their health and well-being um, going forward. Yeah, that's it. That's beautiful, mate. Um, you know, I know um, like there's a lot of lot of players over here. Obviously, the, the AFL is the dominant sport in, in WA and, you know, the Indigenous guys are absolutely talented at it, um, you know, especially with the bush, bush footy. Um, but then you see a lot of them um, end up on the, you know, obviously it's not just Aboriginal kids, but it's, um, you know, you see a lot of them end up in the wrong wrong positions, wrong things in life. Um, you know, I, I think it's a waste of talent a lot of the times. I've seen a lot of my mates that were, um, you know, did the same thing, um, you know, Indigenous and the, white, and the white people, the same thing. It's just an absolute waste of talent. Um, but, you yeah. know, I've noticed a lot with a lot of Aboriginal kids over here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we we do a lot of that. And so what we do with deadly choices here, we we just we really push push the healthy living, obviously, 
Yeah. Uh, but once again, I come back to about, about feeling good about yourself and, and growing in confidence. And, and obviously, when you feel good, that'll come. You'll be mentally better. Um, yeah. And that, that could just comes hand in hand. And, you know, we, we, we go from, from, you know, babies in their mother's wombs these days with deadly choices yeah. right through to when they're ready to go to school. So, you know, a lot of kids have been born in the deadly choices, so they learn that very early. And yeah. then they take that through their uh, the school years and into their adulthood. And, you know, and that, that's what it's about. It's about changing generations around how we look at food, how we look at alcohol, how we look at smokes, um, which is a big thing. And um, we try to teach the community the wrongs and rights around that, um, you know, and no one's perfect. Well, you know, I'm not perfect, uh, you know, um, so, but it's around, you know, you want to live a healthy life. Um, you know, you, you got to, uh, some people, you know, you got to stop and have a look and it's that sliding doors. You can go one way and you can go the other. Yep, absolutely, mate. Well, well said. Um, yeah, couldn't, couldn't have said that any better myself, mate. Um, you know, like we're, we're discussing at the start of the, the chat, um, yeah, possibility of an 18th team. Oh, you've disappeared, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Actually just dropped there. Um, that won't be too long, mate. Um, yeah, Perth has an 18th team. Um, what do you think the chances are? Yeah, I, well, I, look, when Volandi says that, I think it was Peter Volandi, he, he usually backs it up, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So... There's a, there's a fair chance, um, you know, that in the near future that will happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Redcliffe have got their chance. Um, we, we talked about that and they'll take it. You know, they got Wayne Bennett there, so they're going to come out competitive. Um, and, and that sort of sends out a warning to the rest of the clubs, and especially here in Brizzy. Um, you know, we got to be ready for that. Um, we, we got a year now to build on that here as a club. Um, we, we've got some good signings, but... As you go back to the other other team, if if, if Red Cliff are successful, it won't be too long before you see that 18th team. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Um, you know, you would have played against Perth, um, the Western Reds back yeah. in the day as well. Oh, yeah. Um, how, how did you find it travelling to Perth and stuff like that at the times? Well, mate, we loved it, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. But we always loved the trips to Perth and, um, you know, we, we had some good times there. But it was good. Now competitive footy, you know what I mean? So... You know, we we knew we weren't going there for a picnic, and yeah. we we certainly didn't get that. So, um, no, I thought it was great, mate. I, I, Perth's whether things have changed, but Perth back when uh, you know back in the day, I remember talking to varied CEOs, and they were a priority uh, for the NRL, to be yeah. honest. Um, and I'm, I'm not too sure if that much has changed, if that's still on their radar, but. I can remember Perth was a real priority to get an NRL team. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, like I said, this, that was half my point of doing this page, um, you know, to make the NRL, a bit, I guess, take notice. Yeah. Perth does need a team, um, you know, because we have, you know, um, the, the Ki uh, Kiwis, the Islanders, yeah. Um, you know, and Eastern Sanders that all move over here and they love rugby league. Um, you know, if there's even English that come over, they still love their rugby league. The, the supports here are for it, so. Well, mate, I, I can um, go back to, you know, 87. Um, we're in the national, the national carnival was held in Perth. I, I was part of that, you know, playing for Queensland. And yeah. so to, that says that, you know, even back then, they are really pushing for rugby league, you know, to have a, a, a national open schoolboys carnival in Perth means they're interested in rugby league being over there. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's there's so much interest, and I know um, the last couple of years, uh, obviously, except for COVID, when they've um, competed in the state tournaments and stuff, WA's been up there with, um, you know, they've won. I think they've won a couple of the state tournaments and stuff like that as yeah. well. Um, even beating New South Wales and Queensland, so um, it shows that we've got the talent here, and yeah, like I said, we've got the interest. We sold out State of Origin a couple of years ago, so yeah. Well, it's what. One thing I will say, they've done it before um, and they'll, they'll do it again. It's about sustainability and yeah. um, uh, I'm pretty sure things are very different to what they used to be. So, you know, fingers crossed uh, they get another team. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah I'll definitely, get, mate. I'll get to come back over there a bit more often. <laughs> yeah, that's it, mate. I would love to see you over here, mate. Um, I'll definitely take you out for dinner if you come over here. Yeah. Right. Um, just a, um, another, I guess, a personal question uh, before you go, mate. I know you've got another meeting coming up. Yeah. yeah. Just um, a low point in your life. Um, you know, if there was a low point in your life, um, you know, and how did you, how did you get through it? Yeah, low points, you know, they, they can vary. Um, you know, I could be, isn't it funny, I could could do take the easy on, say, diabetes, but it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, because I didn't let it get me to a low point, um, to be honest. Um, I think any time, oh, sorry, here again, any time, <laughs> how's it, any time you have a, a serious injury, life-threatening, oh, not life-threatening, so career-threatening, injury straight away your mind goes to, oh, i'm not going to be able to play again yeah you know what i mean and then you it's all a mental thing i mean physically you got to get yourself right but we always always talked about when you're physically right you got to get the head right and sometimes a lot of players have struggled with that and you know and um but you know once again we were very lucky we had good support around us at brisbane um that we got through a lot of those low points which were career threatening uh injuries to our rugby league career yeah no that's awesome and that's that's the, that's what you need isn't it? the yeah. support the support yeah. around you to get through it um last thing before we go mate um yeah what else are you up to these days obviously you've got you work with deadly choices um yep. what else are we up, what are you up to mate have you got any businesses that you're into or I, no businesses i also i do i do a bit of work for uh, digital health australia okay so we're responsible for the My Health Record. I've been doing a lot of uh, radio interviews, national radio interviews into the communities over there and, and into Perth okay. on Noongar Radio and that. So I've been, I've been talking about the My Health Record and around, you know, getting your vaccinations all for that, like vaccination proof. But uh, so, yeah, we, we're, we've been rolling that out, I think, since 2016 and uh, a lot of good work being done there around the My Health Record and, uh, it's just another part, you know, sort of represent the whole community of Australia around that. And, um, you know, and it's, it's well worth people having a look you know, at their My Health record and uh, you'll see the benefits you can get from that. That's beautiful, mate. That's that's great work. Um, yeah, I love love that sort of work that you're doing, mate. Yeah. Um, mate, that's all I've got for you. And uh, Like I said, I know you've got another uh, meeting coming up. Um, so, yeah, Steve Renoff, the Pearl. Thank you for joining me on NRL Fans WA, mate. Um, much love to you and to your family um, and good luck with everything coming up. You too, Jamie. I really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you so much. Thanks, mate. Have a good day. Peace.